Hi, this is Sarah Levin, the Artful Inker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I've got three hand pin petals cards to share with you. Let's get started. For my first sneak peek card, I'm going to use the hand pinned petal stamp set. It's a two step stamping photopolymer set. And I've got one of the basic white note cards from the note cards in envelopes. And let me bring in the large floral from Hand Pinned. And I'm going to ink that with Just Jade. So let's set that down on here. Now this large stamp is just an outline. And got ink there, and I'm going to take that off with my finger so that I don't end up with ink on the card where I don't want it. And I'm moving this center and towards the top. Now if I get my pinky out from under my block, I'll be in great shape. Okay, so there's my outline in Just Jade, and then we're done with that. And then next I'm going to pull in my Coastal Cabana. And I have double mounted several of the flower fill stamps. And these are just real easy. They don't line up exactly, which frankly I think makes them easier to use. Okay, and let's grab another one here. This. So you end up with that little bit of white around. As I said, I think that makes it easier to do the lining up when they're not an exact. Okay, now let's close up my Coastal Cabana. And we're building a, a tone on tone, but with three different tones here. So now I'm going to use my mint macaron and make sure that I've got my leaf turned the right direction. And again, it's not a complete fill. Okay, and then let's bring in that smaller leaf here. Turn this. Okay. And then before we're through with our stamping, let me bring in one of the envelopes and a piece of scrap paper for under the edge here. And we're going to stamp the corner of the envelope here with this part of the large floral. So we'll just ink the whole thing. Oops. And I want at least one leaf in here. So I'm turning to get what I want there. Okay. And then I'm not going to fill that, but you could um, do the same thing that you did with the note card. I think that's enough decoration. And then I've got a piece of the hand-pinned uh, designer paper. This is the other side of that watercolor washed stripe. And let's grab my multi-purpose glue here. Love the tones in this designer paper just gorgeous in my opinion. Okay, so we've got our stripe there. And then I'm going to add a couple of the genial gems. So this is our simple stamping card and I think 
maybe just one of the genial gems. Okay, and so that's our simple stamping hand-pinned card. Give me a moment to clean up, and I'll be back with our next card. So for this casual level uh, card, we're going to use the hand pin petal stamp set again, and we're going to add the pinned flowers dies. Now this does come as a bundle, and when you bundle, you receive 10% um, off your purchase. So this is a piece of basic white, and I've got that same large flower that I used the first time and my Memento ink pad. And I'm inking this upside down since this is a linen pad. And then let's put my flowers on here and give them a rub all the way around to make sure that everybody touches the paper. And there's our lovely outline. And now it's time to fill in. So I'm going to start with Pale Papaya, which is one of the new in colors. And this is a two-step stamp set. Okay, and then we're done with the Pale Papaya. And let's grab my... Daffodil Delight, and I want to pick up the small flowers for the Daffodil Delight. I don't know why I turned that, because the flowers go the same direction. I love how easy these are to line up and stamp in there, and then I've got Blushing Bride. Make sure I'm picking the right uh, flower, since I didn't put things out of the way as I moved around. I feel like I'm missing a stamp, but we'll, we'll go with this and see, because this Okay, and then we need our leaves, and those are going to be Garden Green. I'm pulling from colors that are in the designer paper. So again, we have the one leaf for the larger leaves, and then a single leaf for filling in the smaller leaves. Okay, so let's put this out of the way. And then I want to use one of those pinned flower dies, and I'm going to cut out our flower here. I was so excited to see that I get both an outline die and then an overlay die in this stamp. So, and all of those dies do fit through the mini stamp and cut and emboss, which is just lovely. So let's put that in here, and we'll line these up on here. And I'm just checking that my I'm outside the outline all the way around. And then I'm going to add a couple of pieces of washi tape. As you can see, I keep a bit of that here on my the edge of my machine so that I'm ready to go for my die cutting. And the mini stamp and cut and emboss will take dies that are up to three and a half inches wide. An awful lot of the Stampin' Up! dies fit uh, the mini stamp and emboss machine. 
which is great. And here we go with our die cut piece. And so now let's get on to assembling our card. So next, I've gone ahead and used the scalloped contours dies to cut a piece of vellum. And this has a scalloped edge and a little stitching around here. I love all of the details on these layers dies. Frankly, I would buy this set of dies just for the layering dies and this great scallop here. So let's get these two pieces layered up. Now I need to grab my dimensionals over here and we're going to add dimensionals on the back. Make sure we're well supported here and then Let's see, turn this over and kind of center this here. And then we're going to use those same dimensional spots as our places for the dimensionals to hold up our vellum layer. Oop, have a tag long. Okay, so let's set that aside a moment and bring in a piece of that hand-penned designer paper. This is the side that we're going to use. And here's the other side, a little Swiss dot on a distressed watercolor background. And this is cut at three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And I've got my stamp and seal here. And I'm just going to turn this over and try to add my adhesive at the same spot on both ends. I need to start this. Oops, there's some there. And then let's come across to this side and we'll, oops. run some here. Okay, and then I'm going to attach a piece of this pretty pale papaya ribbon and just run it around the front. I think that's a little bit low, so let's go here. That's better. Now remember when you add ribbon like this, you don't want to pull it tight tight because it'll cause your layer to buckle. And we don't like that. Not a pretty look. And I've left myself enough ribbon on the back here. Should I turn it over and find that I need to adjust my strip at all? Okay, so next I've got my thick basic white cardstock base and a quarter inch strip of the hand pen designer paper. Normally a layer is four by five and a quarter. And as I said, this one was three and three quarters by five and a quarter. So I'm going to use that extra quarter inch inside here. And let's bring it in so we have a little bit of space on either side there and making sure that I'm straight. And then I've cut a piece of garden green with the small stitched scallop die that's in the um, pinned flower dies. And I'm not going all the way out to either end. I've given myself some extra scallops so that I can come down here and make this as neat as possible and I want to be right right near the bottom so let's push this down now and I need to pull over just a little bit there we go and let's turn this over and use my snips and 
trying to see where I put my snips. Give me just a moment. So we'll just cut this off here. Put that out of the way. Let's put the snips back in my holder back here. And now we're going to add the multi-purpose glue to our hand pen designer paper. And I'm just making sure that I've covered the top of that garden green strip and then that my borders are even all the way around. And let's pull these off. And we'll center this piece. And then we need to finish embellishing. So I'm going to use some baker's twine that I have from the snail mail combo uh, twine pack. Now, if you don't have that, in the new catalog, let's look at this before I finish tying, we have this Baker's Twine Combo Pack, which is great because you've got all your neutral shades here to work with. And let's grab my scissors here and cut my tail. And I want my take your pick and pick up a mini glue dot. And just on the back here. Okay, and then I think we need some jewels. We're going to use the Genial Gems for our bling on this card. And I'm choosing the Pale Papaya to pull out some more of that uh, color that we've got to work with here. And I just love how pretty and, and delicate these are. And there we go. There's our casual leather level hand pinned uh, flowers card. Let me clean up and we'll move on to our avid level card. For the Avid Level card, we're going to again be using the Hand Pen Petal Stamp Set or Bundle and the Pinned Flowers Dies. Now remember, you get a 10% discount when you purchase a bundle versus purchasing the pieces separately. So we're going to use a different flower this time. Just want to make sure I'm getting all of that. And I'm inking in Blushing Bride. Let me stamp that again. And on a piece of shimmery white cardstock. I'm just rubbing all over to make sure I transfer my outline. And then let's put the Blushing Bride out of the way. Next, I'm going to take my Daffodil Delight and I've got a water painter and we're going to do a little bit of water coloring here. Just mixing my ink around a little bit. So I'm just going to quick, how about I zoom in? And maybe, there we go. So we're just going to quick brush in some Daffodil Delight on the petals here. And while that dries. I'm going to move on to my next color. I'm just reaching for my piece of scrap paper to brush out my the Daffodil Delight that's in my brush. So let's move this out of the way. And then I'm going to use some Misty Moonlight. And yes, I've got some in the lid here. 
So let's mix that around a little bit. And I'm just mimicking the colors that are in one of the sheets of the um, designer paper. And I want it to be just as light and watercolory as that paper is, so I'm not laying down lots of extra color. Okay, let's brush that out. And I don't know how I forgot about that other flower sitting there, but we're going to go on with the mint macaron first before I come back to it. And again, just squeezing some water in here and mixing around. And just to add a little variation, I'm putting some of the mint macaron on and touching some up in here just to, to add a little bit of that green in. And then let me grab that Daffodil Delight again. And we're going to quick color this flower with the Daffodil Delight. Now we're going to let that dry and we'll come back to it shortly. Okay, and in the meantime I'm going to take my basic gray ink pad and a piece of basic white and stamp a couple of these stems. We're going to put them behind uh, our flower. So let's see if we can get a third one on here and put the basic gray away and grab our fresh freesia. That's one of the new in colors. And let's add this here. Okay. Oops, close my ink pad. And let's come back around to this one. I think it has dried enough at this point. And we're going to use the basic gray now and stamp that outline on. Now the reason that I, you could line this up in your stamparatus, um, but the reason I stamped with the uh, Blushing Bride to begin with was so that if my color ran at all, the Blushing Bride wasn't going to show. And there we have our outline. So let me die cut these and I'll be right back. So I've cut out our flowers that we stamped and painted. And then I cut out three little flowers from the shimmery white. And we're just going to quick use the Blushing Bride ink pad and our water painter and add a little quick color to these guys. Oops. Face side up and they'll keep the ink on. And last but not least, Okay, so those need to dry a little bit. Let's brush out our water painter while we're here and close up our ink pad. And then also while I was away, I used the scalloped contour dies. If I didn't say this before, I would buy these dies just for the layering bits and that beautiful large scallop. So I cut a piece of basic white and before we go any further I'm going to take my uh, color lifter from the Stampin' Blends and just kind of wet this all over with the color lifter 
and then I'm going to go across that with my mint macaron and then back across this. We're just giving a little texture. We just want that to be light color back there instead of just white. And then I used the largest of those scalloped contour dies to cut a piece of misty moonlight. So while we're waiting for these to dry, let's start and put some pieces together. I've got a piece of the hand-pinned designer paper that I'm going to add to my scallop layer here. And again, we've got a, a pretty back. I'm loving both the A and B sides of these designer papers. If you would like to see them all up close and personal, you can check yesterday's uh, blog post. I have a video uh, that shows all of the designer papers. And let me find my dimensionals here. So that you can get a real feel for what both sides of each piece looks like. And of course now is the time to sign up for your designer paper share or swatch books with me. You can find a link for that in the description below or over on my blog. Okay, so we have that. Now let's go ahead and layer this piece up. And I'm going to want some mini dimensionals as I get to work on this one. So start with the full size dimensionals for these pieces. Okay. And then let's tuck these guys in behind. And I'm just going to use some minis up here at the top. I'm not going to put any dimensional down around the stem. And I, I'm going to show this to you from behind. That die that cuts these cuts a little detail here so you get some more texture on the front. That's a little hard to see on camera, I think, with uh, the stamping over it. Okay. So let's pull these off now. And I'm just going to lightly place this on here, just in case I need to move anything. And I don't like to press anything down until everybody's in their place. We've got some tag-alongs with the backing. And then we're going to stick this one in here to fill out that side. Now I know I'm going to have to at least double up on this one. And I'm thinking it's going to have to be a triple up. Okay. And then while we're here, let's put our dimensionals on the back of this layer. And straighten this up and put this here in the, the middle. Okay, and these should be good and dry now, so let's give them some attention. I've got my stamp and pierce mat here, and I just like to keep it in one of the stamp cases. And I'm going to use the large ball from 
my take your pick tool just to rub around on these a little bit and get them to curl up. They look like little faces in here. Okay. Just trying not to get caught in the the die cut holes here. I'd like this one to curl just a little more. Okay, let's put this all of this out of the way. Okay, let's bring this card back in and grab my glue dots and we're just going to put these on. Again, I'm just going to set them here until I know that they're exactly where I want them to be, so no pressing down. Of course, it helps if the glue dot goes onto the flower and not my fingernail. Okay determined to take that with my fingernail and not the flower. Okay, so let's move these around just a little bit. I want them in here nice and tight. Okay, a little cluster of those. And then I've got some crinkled white seam binding and I'm going to do a, a double bow here and before I finish I want to take a piece of this misty moonlight and silver twine it's in the flowers for every season uh, ribbon combo pack and we're just going to put a couple of pieces of that in here trying to keep it nice and small and then I'm going to wrap around with my crinkled seam binding and cut off some extra length here before I tuck in. I've got a couple of one simple trick videos for tie tying bows that are a little extra uh, a faux bow and then a, there's an extra fluffy bow uh, video if you would like some help tying yours. Oops. And then we're going to cut this little bit shorter. Let's take these out of the way and grab those glue dots again. I just want to arrange everything before we start adding glue dots. And I'm going to change the end on my take your pick. This is where I want the, the pick end of the take your pick. And let's tear off our backing sheet here. Got too many things going. Okay, so. We're going to add a couple of mini glue dots on the back here to keep this bow from moving around. And then we'll add another one just for good measure to stick it to our card. And then once I've got it down, I'll trim my tails just a little bit. This one's too long. I like long tails, but that was too long. Okay, and then we need to finish and embellish. To embellish, I'm just going to use some of the clear dots from the silver and clear epoxy droplets. So let's use our take your pick and bring those right on over here. And they just add a little more something, but not a lot of something. Trying to decide. We're going to give it a little droplet up there. And then I think we're going to do our final droplet right down here. 
Okay, and there is our Avid card using the new hand-pinned stamp set. It will be available May 4th if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! catalog, a new one. Use the link in the description below to request a catalog from me. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell if you'd like to be notified the next time I upload a video. If you would like a designer paper sampler, use the link in the description below to request that. And have a great day. Thanks for stopping by.